Hello, another repair today. This is the Kronos flagship, the Kronos X88 or 88X. Anyway, uh, this is the all singing, all dancing, everything that you ever want to do with it. However, it uses a touchscreen, and uh, the touchscreen is glass, and glass breaks. And this glass is broken. Uh, a light bulb fell off somewhere and landed straight into the glass and shattered it. So the touchscreen doesn't work at all and unfortunately a lot of the user interface is on the screen. It's got a lot of buttons but you still need that screen for a lot of other things that you need to select and it doesn't. So thank you especially to Lucy at Korg UK uh, who I rang yesterday about lunchtime and said can I have another screen and this morning it arrives. How's that for service? Thank you Lucy, big thumbs up. So in here a nice new touch screen and uh, oh some of those cheesy what's it? <laughs> or oh, mint. Mm. Anyway nice new touch screen and we're going to put this in. Hopefully, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, but uh, if you can get a screwdriver to it, you can fix it. So let's have a look at this touch screen. It's not the LCD display. This is a piece of glass that sits over the top of it. And as you can see on the piece of glass, there's a sort of an X and a Y little ribbon that comes up there and this gives the information as to where this piece of glass is being touched so this is the new piece that's got to go in right I put that somewhere safe that's extremely fragile until we get it inside there right. okay Screwdriver time. Now, what I'm hoping, I mean, I have fired it up and all the LCD does light up and there's no black spots or anything, but I have noticed along here there's lots of tiny, tiny shards of glass everywhere. So it's shattered underneath the glass. Now, if I'm really lucky and I get to take this out nice and carefully, that glass hasn't scratched something underneath but uh, that's uh, yeah that, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be absolutely fine right okay let's undo this thing there's a heck of a lot of screws in the bottom of this thing and I don't know which ones it's going to be for taking it apart it's actually a wooden bottom on it uh, right I think the best thing to do here is just take out all the the outer edged ones first and see what happens. Right. Of course it's so bloody heavy this thing. Even the piece of wood on the bottom. Oh you little beauty! Would you look at that? Ah, a lot of nice stuff in here. A lot of people have complained about the noise of the fan inside these Kronosers. Uh, so I'm just going to lift that out and have a look. So, uh, uh, yes, well, there's certainly a substantial size fan, that's for sure. But we'll take that out for the minute. Cool. These are the hammers because this is the RH3 hammer action keyboard. And if you notice, there's metal missing there, and then the metal appears here, and they chop a smaller piece out along here. And then they have that piece left in again there, and they chop this end off instead for a while. And then it's a full piece of metal all the way down to the end here. Therefore, these keys are heavier to press than the keys at that end. And because the keyboard's flipped over, this is the heavy end, and that's the light end. So that's how they do their sort of piano feel, because these are weights. Okay, there's only one, two, three, four. There's only five 
sets of different weights in use, but it does give the feeling that this is much lighter and this is much heavier. So that's how that hammer action works. Now, we'll have a look inside here because all you're looking at basically here is a computer. Just here, you'll see this is an Intel desktop computer. One of the little atoms, the Intel atoms. On the edge here, it's still got all the connections for printers and headphone input and there's two USBs and there's a LAN connector as well. I mean, why you can't just extend that LAN to the back and have a, you know, a connector already on the keyboard, I don't know, never mind. But here, interestingly, this is a little connector where you can plug on a wireless LAN onto there. That's not involved. One of the nice things though, and I'm sorry to say this for all you poor Tyros users out there who have to spend so much money on memory. This uses normal, bog standard, off the shelf computer memory. So if you want to upgrade one of these, it's a case of nipping to your computer shop or whatever and picking this stuff up cheap. I mean, I actually got this two gig for two pounds on the car boot sale. And you know, this, this, is, this is maxed up. But uh, if it was to be memory for Tyros, that's over a hundred quid for one gig. So, sorry about that. I do like the Tyros, I love the Tyros keyboard, but I kind of think some of the optional add-ons are a little bit overpriced. Anyway, nag, 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 moan, moan, moan. Let's move on and have a look inside here. As you can see, so there's your basic computer. And then here is a, a standard sort of computer power supply. It's all very nicely made. It's got all the hot snot elastic and things to, to stop bits vibrating. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, good brand of capacitors and things in there. Uh, okay, very nice. The board underneath here is all the touch buttons. So that's just a touch button control. Here is the sort of well-known fan that annoyingly some people have louder fans than others and there's quite a bit of uh, chat on some of the forums about how noisy these fans are inside these. Uh, underneath this is an SSD hard drive. This is a 64 gig SSD. You can put a second hard drive in there and you could do this yourself because the power for the hard drive is sitting here waiting for you to put in a second SSD. And then all you do is you add the cable and plug it into the board at that end. And you've added your own SSD, another 128 gigs or whatever you like. Because it's a good sampling powerhouse this machine is, you know, some people will need that extra memory. Moving on, underneath here is the display. And there's that same little ribbon connector that I'm going to have to change when I put the glass in. Uh, this looks like it's going to be a little bit of a problem to get that out because there's not a lot of room. But we'll come back to that when we start repairing it. Just here is your board for the USBs, you know, all your USB connections and things that are on the back. And then here and here is your pedals, MIDI, uh, audio inputs, outputs, all that sort of stuff. And here is a, another control board that contains all your sliders and faders and everything. But yeah, it's, it's a reasonably simple design. I, I kind of wonder, in a way, as it's all computer based, why Korg hasn't bought out a box with these faders and things on and you know the uh, sort of audio ins and outs and things and make it into a nice little rack mount or something and have you run it through your own computer because the, the software in here you know it's running on a on a computer so why they don't release the software and have a nice little uh, box that you sit next to it and you say call Kronos in a in a rack or something but it runs on your own computer I mean, I think that would be a that would be a good seller. That would, because then you wouldn't have to have a great big keyboard. 
I mean, the key, this keyboard works fine for me. I'm happy with this. Uh, but to some people, to just have a little rack with the whole Kronos inside a rack and use their own PC for the, the, the hard work, you know, Core could sell quite a, a few of those. I'm, I'm sure they could. After all, uh, Roland has done the Integra. I think Core could do the Kronos in a similar sort of layout. Right, OK. Now I'm going to try and figure out how the hell we get this uh, display out of there so we can change the glass. So, bear with me. I'm going to have a cup of tea and then come back to it. Oh, I'm still trying to figure out how the hell I'm going to get to this uh, display in here. And I've been wiggling about. I'm taking a couple of screws out. And what I'm aiming to do, but I think it's probably going to be the wrong way, is uh, try and lift out the key bed uh, so that to reveal the bottom of this display. I can't see any screws holding it in place, but uh, somehow it's it's holding in. I don't want to pull away at it because I don't want to destroy the actual LCD part of it. So let's see what I can do. That gets the uh, the bumper off. Off for my American viewers, the fender. Oh. Do you know, I've got a feeling I'm going to take all this to pieces and then find a little clip there and the screen will probably just pop through the other side. Somebody at Korg is probably laughing their head off at me thinking, ha ha ha, credit card, slot and out it comes. Well, I'll figure it out. There's no keyboard. Hey, it's gone. Right. There is a, a line of screws at the bottom here. Uh, so I'm going to undo these and try and get this screen out. There's probably going to be one hiding up the top somewhere, but let's let's have a go. Let's have a go and see what we can do. Okay, I've got to take this board out here because there's a screw underneath here that I need to undo. So bear with me. I don't want to frig about with the screen. I just want to change this panel here. So let me find something to wedge in there. I don't want to upset the LCD underneath it. I just want this glass piece off, this touchscreen. How do we do it? Unfortunately, this panel, the touchscreen panel, is stuck on with some sort of double-sided sticky foam and is proving to be a, a bit of a swine to try and lift it. So what I'm going to do is heat it just a bit, hopefully to try and loosen off the stickiness. So I'm going to use one of these hot air blowers, the type you use for desoldering surface mount devices, but I'm going to use it on a low setting just to warm the edges up. Now here is a complicated multi-way ribbon that goes to the LCD and I'm just going to put this here to try and heat shield it because it's plastic. I don't want to destroy that. Difficult to do with only two hands, that's for sure. I'm at the uh, far end of the LCD display now and just heating up the last piece of glass here to try and loosen the glue a little. So there you have it. There is the broken piece. Now there's shards of glass all over the LCD display here. So I'm going to have to get those up as carefully as possible. I don't want to scratch this at all. And then I've got to figure out a way of sticking down the new one in the right place. Now what I'm going to do before my brain gives way, I'm just going to put a little mark there so I know which side the cable runs off. Right, successfully I've cleaned all the screen up. There's no scratches in the LCD at all, which is very nice. Uh, because I thought some of the glass might have scratched the surface of the LCD panel underneath it. Because the LCD panel has a, 
a polarized sort of plastic sheet and uh, having scratches in that would not have been very nice it's got to be absolutely perfectly clean before it goes on now what we've got to do is put it back in build the whole thing and fire it up again see if I've got it right <laughs> And there's the key bed. Right, you still feel me? Hmm. But I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> now Dave from the EEV blog, okay, says you should have your tongue at this angle. <sighs> so let's try that Dave. <sighs> And it worked! Thanks Dave! This is a big test to make sure it all works. I'm sure it will. Uh, the only thing, well, if it's all running okay, the only thing would be to maybe reset up and calibrate the screen. But I'll see how close it is for some of the controls first. It's all lit up anyway, the display's there, it's all alive, it's all looking very pretty. And uh, the trouble is, these things take two minutes to start up. Two minutes is a long time when you want to check if something's working. Bored now. <sighs> right, the big test. Will the finger work the buttons? Hey. Oh! Right. Okay, try something a bit smaller like lid position. Yes. Oh yes, thank you. Uh, yes, it's working it. Oh, I love you. They work. What about uh, combination modes? Well, I'm happy with that. Everything seems to work all right there. The screen all works correctly. I haven't even had to uh, do the recalibration or anything. Everything seems to be just the right place. So it's all working. It's all fine. Brilliant. Now uh, I'm going to play. Being as I'm wearing the t-shirt, I'm going to play Jean-Michel Jarre piece, Oxygen 2. But I'll tag that on the end of this video actually, so it's not part of this. It'll just be a little tiny video that's rolling off after the end of this one. Right. I'd just like to say a big thank you to Lucy at Korg UK, who I rang yesterday asking for the part, and the part arrived this morning. You know, I mean, what service is that? Fantastic. Thank you very much, Lucy, uh, for your brilliant service. I don't think your snacks are going to catch on, though. But, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Lucy, and thank you very much, you lot, for watching me as well. And uh, I'll find something else to do soon. So thank you very much. All the best.